Today we're diving into the Ace Magic Vista V1, a mini PC powered by Intel's N150 processor. It's incredibly compact, ideal for home office tasks, and surprisingly budget friendly. But the big question is, does it deliver enough performance to stand out in the competitive budget mini PC market? Whether you're casually browsing for your first mini PC or you've already binged 10 videos and are here for the hidden gems, this review is for you. Subscribe and let's break it down. First up, the unboxing. Crack open the box and you've got the usual user manual on top, the PC itself wrapped in a plastic sleeve. It's a sleek, ultra compact unit. Then you've got the essentials, a 30 watt power adapter, an HDMI cable and a VESA mount with screws. No extras, no fluff, just what you need to get started. Simple, functional and exactly what you'd expect at this price. First impressions, solid. Okay, so this thing is ridiculously small, like we're not even in mini PC territory anymore. This is a straight up nano PC, maybe even a pocket PC if you got cargo shorts on. I mean, 3.9 inches square, 1.3 inches tall, <laughs> that's tiny. Now, it's plastic, which usually isn't my favorite, but it doesn't feel cheap. It's actually pretty solid, and the ports are all laid out nicely. On the front, you've got your power button, two USB 3 zeros, and an audio jack. Sides have vents for airflow, which is crucial in something this small. Flip it around and boom, Gigabit LAN, HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4 and two more USB 2.0s. So connectivity wise, it's got everything you need. There's no USB-C so you'll need adapters and the external eGPU cards are out of the question here. That said, the inclusion of VESA mount is a nice touch, letting you easily attach it to the back of your monitor for a clean, clutter-free setup. Let's plug it in and see what it can do. Out of the box it comes with Windows 11 Home and setup takes around 15 to 20 minutes. You'll need a wired mouse and keyboard for the initial setup, but Bluetooth works great after that. And with a decent number of USB-C ports, you shouldn't have any issues connecting your stuff. Under the hood, we've got Intel's Twin Lake N150 processor. 4 cores, 4 threads, 800MHz base clock, boosting up to 3.6GHz. Not exactly a speed demon, but we'll see how it performs. 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs SSD and good news you can upgrade via M2 NVMe slot networking wise gigabit ethernet and Wi-Fi 5 do the job but Wi-Fi 6 would be nice taking it apart is easy just a few screws under the rubber feet though watch out for the LAN antenna cables inside you got sodium RAM slot and M2 slot so there's upgrade potential always a plus in budget mini PCs performance the N150 is a step up from older N-series chips, especially in graphics. The Intel UHD graphics now has 24 execution units, but it's single-channel DDR4 RAM, which is a bottleneck for gaming and memory-heavy tasks. Benchmarks back this up. In Geekbench 6, we got 1113 in single-core, 2569 in multi-core, and 4225 in OpenCL for GPU tests. Signbench R23, 925 in single core and 2437 in multi core. Not built for gaming, but solid for daily tasks, light productivity, and some casual gaming. If you are eyeing thin ATP video editing, it's doable in DaVinci Resolve, but anything more demanding will hit limits. Compared to something like the Minisforum UN1250, this isn't a powerhouse, but for office work, browsing, and light to medium workloads, it holds its own. Handles 2K and 4K monitors without breaking a sweat. If you're looking for something with a bit more power, I'll be reviewing the Minisforum UN1250 and UM890 Pro soon, so stay tuned for that. I tested it on a 2K monitor, smooth. Plugged it into a 4K TV, no issues. Even hooked it to my new portable dual monitors. If you're curious, I'll be reviewing those soon, so hit subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Technically, it supports dual displays, one via HDMI, one via DisplayPort, but no USB-C, so adding a third screen would be a hassle. And as a media center, solid choice. 4K streaming, classic emulation, no problem. But since we're talking gaming, let's see what this thing can actually handle. 
let's be real, this isn't exactly a gaming powerhouse. We're not taking cyberpunk at max settings here, but if you temper your expectations, it can handle some light gaming. Fired up Asphalt Legends, drop the settings to low and yeah, it runs just fine. No complaints there. Tried launching Roblox for my son, but it straight up crashed every time, so that was a no-go. Indie games though, surprisingly playable. Even at 4K with everything dialed down, it held 30fps most of the time, which honestly, I wasn't expecting. Had to test some classic console emulation, of course. Fired up Dolphin to play some classic Mario Kart, hooked it up to a 4K TV, ran flawlessly. No hiccups, no lag. So as a media PC or a retro gaming machine, this handled it just fine. Would I call it gaming PC? No. But retro gaming, all their 3D titles and light esports games should run fine with the right settings. Okay, thermal performance. Honestly, pretty impressive. Even under load, it stays cool and quiet. The fan is there if you really listen for it, but it's not distracting. Heat vent out the sides, so just make sure those are not blocked. Power draw, around 30 watts, expected for this size. Even when gaming, fan noise barely hits 35 decibels. Whisper quiet, no noticeable thermal throttling, even when pushing it hard. However, during Sidebench R23, vent temps spiked to around 40, 45 Celsius. Not alarming, but something to keep in mind. So who's this mini PC for? Anyone needing a compact, no-force PC for everyday use, office work, streaming, casual gaming, got an old non-smart TV, this turns it into a full-fledged media hub. Running Windows 11 is beginner-friendly, perfect for students, parents, even grandparents. The small size is a win. You can mount it behind the TV, tuck it under a desk, or use Wake on LAN for remote access in schools or offices. The only thing I wish, faster RAM. 3200 megahertz instead of 2666 megahertz would've helped with multitasking. But for its price, it punches above its weight. For under $200 US, the Ace Magic Vista V1 is a strong contender in the budget mini PC space. It's not replacing your high-end gaming rig or editing workstation, but for daily tasks, casual gaming and streaming, it delivers. Upgradeability is a plus. Downsides, slower RAM, weak Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and no USB-C, but at this price, forgivable. Compared to other budget mini PCs, it holds its ground. If you need more ports or faster specs, you'll have to pay more.